Welcome back everybody. Silas here today on this cold snowy day. This is the most snowfall we have gotten in one snowfall in uh, I think almost 10 years now. This area where I'm at got up to 10 inches. For the last few years we've been in a major drought here in Kansas. We haven't hardly gotten any rain, hardly any snow and the crops have suffered because of it. The reservoirs have suffered because of it. If we can get even just this one snow is going to make a big difference. But anyway before I left last week I went on a quick trip to Branson it was beautiful in Branson, sunny and warm, real nice over there. I was watching on Facebook all the people that were stuck here in the snow as it was starting to snow and the streets were shutting down and everything was shutting down. But where we were, it was beautiful. So I kind of felt bad for everybody that was stuck here. But anyway, before I left, I did film some stuff. I started recording a video and actually I recorded the whole video. However, there was a bunch of, bunch of stuff happened. I won't go into detail, but I can't use most of that video now, unfortunately. Just one of the things uh, of being a YouTuber, sometimes you run into situations like this. So I went through it and I deleted a bunch of the stuff that I can't use. However, there is a bunch of interesting things that happened. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you all of that now. Welcome back everybody, Silas here today. And there's some big things happening out here at the junkyard. There's gonna be a lot of different things in this video, so stay tuned. First up on today's agenda, check out what I just bought. I'm pretty stoked about this right here. This is a 2011 Grand Marquis. I've been wanting the subframe setup out of one of these for quite a while, actually. I think 06 to 11 Grand Marquis and uh, Crown Vicks are the same. A lot of vintage trucks. This setup here with a little bit of work will bolt right in. It's the perfect dimensions, and that way you've got modern disc brakes, modern suspension. I'm just going to set it off to the side for now until I have time to get it all pulled. This came in today as well. The car itself is pretty much just junk. It's got a blown motor in it, and I think the transmission was getting weak, too but this has got a really cool nose on it that we might cut off if we have time. I'm not gonna be doing much today. Tomorrow, Sean, maybe a couple other guys are gonna come out here and help me, but I need to dig out that GMC back there. I have the front clip off of that one sold. And another really important item on my to-do list is I've gotta dig out this 1957 Dodge. I have this truck sold. However, we, we couldn't quite agree on a price. So finally, we agreed on a price. I'm gonna cut the nose of it off and keep that for myself, and then he's gonna buy the rest of it. The hood's really rusty and part of the grill's already gone, so he didn't really care about that part of it. And potentially, once he gets here, he may go ahead and buy this old town panel as well. In addition to everything that's going on, I've got something really exciting I want to show you guys, but that's going to be later in the video. Right now, let's get busy. Uh, whatever I get done today, I will, and then we're going to just keep at it tomorrow again. And there we go, got it set out. As you can see, a little bit closer now, that hood is super rusty. And then it's got that big old crunch right there in the nose. Part of the grill's gone already. And it's got a, I think that's a GM bumper. It doesn't look like a Dodge bumper. It might be, I don't know. But anyway, the guy said he doesn't need all that stuff. So he said, go ahead and cut that off and sell him the rest of it. It's not in too terrible a condition. I mean, it's a little bit beat up and it's missing the doors. And it is a big window cab. That's the main thing he wants actually, but he decided he'd just go ahead and buy the whole truck for extra parts. He said that rear end might be something he can use and who knows what else he might need. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this front end off of here. It's working pretty good. What I'll go ahead and do next is I'll go ahead and come up here, cut across the hood a little bit. I may have to bust out the Sawzall with that blade there. You can't quite get everywhere. The reason why I like using that blade is it makes the cleanest cuts. The torch kind of tears stuff up. The Sawzall, it's easy to go crooked and can make some jagged edges. I just really like cutoff wheels for cutting these off, but there are some things you just can't reach.
I thought my guy was here with a load of junk, but it was Sean that I heard up here. Well, he's here. He's going to cut the axles and the transfer case and some stuff out of this international for me. I have all that stuff sold, so he can work on that while I'm working on some other stuff. I was unloading this thing, or the whole load, and I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't come off his trailer. Come to find out, he still had the cable hooked up to part of the load, so that's what was snagging. As soon as he unhooked that, it came right off, but this is a short bed here. Kind of a shame that it's all beat up like it is. It's not too rusty, really. A little bit in it, but not too bad. Had a bunch of square body doors and hood and fenders and stuff inside it, but I just flipped it upside down in the dumpster, shook it out, and yanked it back out to use it for a skid to haul junk around. I did pull the tailgate off of it. It's not a real good tailgate, but it'll work for art. It's got some body putty in it where it's been dented. Then I loaded up that old 69 or 70 Chevy frame, and now these axles are just about out of this. Pick the frame up and these will stay behind hopefully. Alright, that's all ready to go. That's actually a really good looking nose. That'll sell no problem. It's a very unique nose. I almost said iconic. I don't know if you'd call it iconic. And some people probably think it's ugly, but it's you can't say that it's not unique. Dodge had some very unique styling for 57. They went to get lunch, but when they get back, we're going to go ahead and knock out this bed here. I have been dodging this thing for like three weeks now. <laughs> it's been in the way for a while, actually longer than that. But it's a Ford script bed. I hate to scrap it. So we're going to go ahead and pop that off of there. And then I have a guy wanting to buy the starter off of it, so I'm going to get that off of there. And then while I'm pulling stuff apart, I'll probably go ahead and pull the carburetor too, just for good measure. Kind of a shame that was a good running engine, but it's got a little bit of water in it now from sitting out. And nobody ever wants those early flatheads anyway. So once we get these few parts off of it, it'll probably just go in the crusher pile. And then I just noticed that the uh, flatbed's not attached to this truck. So I need to make sure he wasn't uh, really wanting that. If he doesn't want that, I'll go ahead and pull that off of there. We got the front clip knocked off this GMC, got it loaded up in the bed of that other one. And then the guy messages me and he says, well, what's the dash like in this one here? They're a different body style of cab. This is called the dog leg style cab, but this is the first year of this style of dash. The other dash is almost identical to this, only this one here has the deluxe heater controls and just a little bit different and it's a little bit better. The other one's a really plain Jane dash and it's really been hacked on quite a bit. And so he wants this dash and then he says, well, I might need other parts off of it as well. 
so he said that he wants to just go ahead and buy this whole cab. Unfortunately, we are out of time today, so that's not going to be in this video. What we'll have to do on that is go ahead and pop the cab off with the loader, set it over there beside that truck, but because it's so high to swing it around and put it in there, I'm going to have to use the excavator to pick it up that high. I just picked this up yesterday. This is a 2024 Texas Bragg, 36 foot hydraulic dovetail, 12,000 pound axles, hydraulic landing gear. It's got a solar charger on it. It's got a trickle charger on it for when I plug it into the truck. Just a good trailer. I have needed something like this for a long time. You guys see me going to these auctions out in Timbuktu, hauling one car at a time on my trailer. And it's been a great trailer. I'm not getting rid of that trailer. I'm definitely keeping it. But I needed something that was a little bit bigger to where I could haul two cars at once. I will actually be putting this trailer to use next week as long as things go right. Uh, there's a guy getting ready to crush out a bunch of stuff and he's got a few old cars he said he was going to crush. And so he says he took a little bit over scrap value for him. Didn't say what that meant though. Some people a little over scrap value is a couple hundred bucks. Some people a little over scrap value is a thousand dollars over scrap value. So if he's in like the two hundred dollars over scrap value range, I'll go ahead and buy everything. Man, that nose, every time I walk past this nose, it just looks good. It's dangerous though, because I'm going to talk myself into keeping this if I keep looking at it too long. I need to sell it before I think about it too much more. Everybody always asks me where I sell my noses at, and usually just right here on YouTube, people see my stuff and they email me and they say, hey, how much for the trunk section off of that Fairlane 500? And they send me a screenshot. I give them a price and if they want it, I get it knocked off of there. I do require a deposit before I cut stuff up usually. Now this truck here, obviously I had to cut it up anyway, so that wasn't the same. We got this frame all knocked out. That engine was super clean. And like I say, this truck was running when I got it. And so Sean decided he was gonna go ahead and keep the engine off of it, try to sell it. I kept the carburetor and the starter off of it. I had those sold already actually before he said anything about the engine. So uh, I had to keep those, I couldn't go back on that but I just gave him the motor for helping out today. And then one more really unique piece I wanna show you guys over here is this old cab over truck. Nothing special on the truck. I think it's a 62 or three model, but this is a diesel. It has a Dagenham Mark II in it. Big old six cylinder diesel. You can't really see it too good from out here. And this cab is a nightmare to open, so I'm not gonna open it. Plus it would hit this truck anyway. But yeah, this is a factory diesel. You don't hardly ever see these, but I keep hoping somebody will buy that motor out of this. I actually owned this truck once years ago. Somebody brought it in for scrap. I bought it for scrap and a, a diesel collector found out about it and he says, I gotta have that. So he bought it. He had it for probably, man, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. And he never did anything with it and he's cleaned it up. So he went ahead and sold it back to us. And welcome back to the current time. We're back out here in the snow once again. I'm not sure what the agenda for today is. It's actually supposed to get up pretty warm today. It's supposed to get up in the 40s. A bunch of the snow is going to go away. So that's going to make it much easier to work. I don't like working in deep snow just because I'm always afraid I'm going to run over something that I can't see and something's going to fall off a car in the snow and I won't see it. And it just, it kind of makes life a pain when it's really muddy or really snowy. way up in the air. <laughs> this thing is way heavier than I thought it was. And of course I forgot my GoPro mount at home today. So I can't put it on top of the loader. So I'm trying to drive one handed. It's making this a little bit complicated, but I think we can get her. Ooh, man, <laughs> I'm getting it, but this is a wild ride. I don't know how I'm even gonna get this in the dumpster. I'm gonna take it over here now. I'm gonna pull the uh, diesel injection pump off of it. And then I'm gonna pull the hood the radiator off of it and the grill I mean and of course the radiator too get all that off of there then I'm gonna go ahead and scrap the rest of it this is the tractor that I came from a farm cleanup a couple months ago everybody said you've got to save that tractor you've got to save that that's worth big money so I said okay so I went ahead and saved it listed it for sale and then everybody told me oh well it's not really worth that much money it's got rotted wheels and tires on it so I listed it for fifteen hundred dollars or best offer I've had a couple people offer me seven hundred dollars for it but uh as heavy as this thing is, it'll be interesting to see what it brings for scrap, but it's gonna be a whole lot more than $700. And honestly, it's probably gonna wind up being more than $1,500 as well. That's a pretty cool piece right there on the steering wheel. I'll have to figure out how to get that off of there. I thought about saving the fenders as well, but 
I don't know. I don't know how exactly how they're on here. They're on here pretty good, it looks like. I don't know. I'll probably just leave them on there. That's a lot of work to get those off. They're not that cool like the old ones are anyway. Which I realize this tractor's pretty old, but it's not that old, really. Uh, I'm trying to remember how these grills come off. I think you have to take them apart a little bit. A handful of screws right here that connect it to the radiator. It's easier if you just go ahead and pull the hood off. So you take these bolts out here. I'll get the torch out here in a second, and uh, I'll cut this off. Cut this off, get all these mufflers and intakes and stuff like that out of the way. I know there's a ton of good parts on this thing that would sell online, but I'm just out of time. Prices are up a little bit right now. I just want this tractor gone. I'm not a tractor person, and uh, nobody wants to buy it. It's been advertised for sale for uh, two months now at least, maybe longer. I've had a ton of people ask about it, but everybody tells me I'm crazy on my price. And uh, honestly, I am crazy on my price because that's way too cheap. All right, let's see what happens. Come loose, I think. I've got a few more bolts holding the grill on. I think the radiator and the grill come off all together. Oh, this gas tank is stuck in one spot still. Right. Of course, can't find my pry bar. It's out here somewhere buried in the snow. Must have fell off the table or something. This will work. Whew, it is getting slick out here. Okay, I'm missing one thing. There's something else holding somewhere. Oh, I see. There's one bolt holding the gauge cluster on. So I got to get that bolt real quick and then it should come right off. Okay, let's try this again. I think I got everything now. Uh, this is a two-man job. Two-man job, but I do the work of three men, so. <laughs> there we go. Uh-oh. There's something snagging. Uh-oh. Oh, I missed a... A cable. Oops, snag my microphone on here. That's the bad thing about these magnetic mics. They're clip on and magnetic. <laughs> and sometimes they magnetic to the wrong things. Whew, this thing is a little bit heavier than I want to lift by myself, but gotta get it off of here and I won't have help anytime soon. So, well, I say that I might have help tomorrow, but I want to get this done today. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna take the mic off and set it over here so I don't snag it again. Okay, I could not get this thing off to save my life. I figured out what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take it all completely apart and uh, you're supposed to pull the fan off of it and the fan shroud, I mean, you're supposed to just take everything apart and we ain't doing all that. So I got the torch out, I cut most of the blades off the fan. Now it should just come right off of there. There, now it'll come right off of there. Oh, there we go. Woo, that is heavy. It's a big radiator. We got it. There we go. Got it all stripped out. I know, like I say, I know, I know there's more stuff that would sell. Like I know that oil filter would sell and I'm sure those manifolds might sell and power steering pump would probably sell. Starter, fuel filter setup, all that stuff would sell. But man, that injection pump was a nightmare to take off and that was all the parts pulling I want to do for the day. But here's all the sheet metal off of it. Turned out pretty good, I think. I think somebody will buy that. I have a guy that's bought a lot of tractor grills and hoods from me. Not this big. They're probably about half that long. And he puts uh, stools beside them and he welds them all together, puts legs on them, puts a, a top on them. And he uh, turns them into like bar tables. So I might send him some pictures of that. If he doesn't buy it, I'm sure somebody will. And somebody that actually is fixing one of these tractors up might want this stuff because this is actually some pretty nice sheet metal. And I know like that little nose piece there, that sells for good money. The grills always sell. I mean, every, everything here is worth good money. It still has all the chrome trim on it. There's a lot of good parts on this still. And then also I got a small pile of copper off of it. Not much, but you know, it was there and it was super easy to pull. But beyond that, I think we are done with this. My dumpster is still full actually right now. They were supposed to empty it today sometime. We'll see if they get to it. If not, we'll throw this in the dumpster tomorrow when they empty it. I'm thinking this tractor without all that stuff on it weighs at least five and a half tons, maybe six tons, maybe even more than that because of these heavy weights on the back of it. I have a lot of people say I should save these weights and they're worth a dollar a pound or this or that. But uh, around here, they're just not. Every auction you go to, they sell these wheel weights like this for less than scrap price, just because nobody wants them. Now, the suitcase weights, those bring good money still. But this type of weight is just so common here that nobody wants them. 
and I realize that in other markets those sell for good money but the cost of shipping to get it from here to those markets and then what do I do once I get to that market? Do I just show up in a Walmart parking lot and say, hey, I got some wheel weights for sale? <laughs> it doesn't work like that. I always tell everybody if this stuff's worth a ton of money in your area and I believe you that it is, what you need to do is you just need to grab yourself a trailer and come down here and buy it from me and then take it back up there and make a bunch of money. Next up on the agenda, I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready to go for scrap. I'll throw it in with the tractor. I was saving it for the engine. It's got a 272 on it that's supposed to run good, but I've advertised it now for a while and nobody's been interested in it for 200 bucks. And 272s aren't a very or aren't a very popular engine. Not a lot of people like them. It's hard enough to sell a 292. That tractor isn't gonna take up the whole dumpster and I don't plan on scrapping anything else small for a little while at least. So I need something to put in there. So I figure that frame will be the perfect thing to throw in there on top of it. That way they can come get the dumpster, get it back out of here. But before I pull that carburetor and all that off of there, I just got some fan mail. So I figured we'll open that up together. I have no clue what's in here. We're about to find out. It says fragile, do not bend. You know what I should have done was go ahead and open this off camera and then bend it in half. And then be like, oh, wait a second. It says do not bend. <laughs> Business hours. We are open most days about nine or 10, occasionally as early as seven, but sometimes as late as 12 or one. We are closed about five or six, occasionally four or five, but sometimes as late as 11 or 12. Some days or afternoons we aren't here at all. And lately we've been here about just about all the time except when I'm someplace else, but I should be here then too. That's pretty funny there. And that's the truth. I, I get here when I get here and I leave when I leave. I know that drives people up a wall, but that's just the way my life rolls sometimes. So that's pretty cool. Let's see what's in this box. Huh, an old Canon camera. That's kind of neat, HP camera. You know, back in the day, you remember going to Walmart and they would just have rows and rows and rows of cameras there and Best Buy and places like that. And they still do to some extent, but they're all like high-end cameras now. But back in the day before cell phones, they had tons of budget cameras there. Those are kind of interesting. Blast from the past. What do we got here? Well, that's a cool one. What is that? A KSX Super? That's actually kind of a neat one there. An old Sears. Huh, interesting stuff. Thank you, Terry. I better get back to work though before I lose the sunlight. Well, change of plans. Looks like two of the trucks I was expecting just showed up. Oh, and he brought the two best ones first, good. <laughs> I'm always nervous when I buy multiple vehicles long distance away and you get the junky ones first and leave the good ones behind. Sometimes that's what you have to do and sometimes that doesn't work out very well, but he grabbed the good ones first, so. Makes me feel a whole lot better. Now you're probably looking at these and saying, those are the good ones. How junky are the junk ones? <laughs> well, these are pickups here. The other ones are uh, big trucks. So that's the difference. I'm gonna set the camera up right here. Go grab the loader, get them unloaded. we go what do we got here this one here's a little bit rougher than it was in the pictures the, the problem is the pictures were absolutely atrocious I mean some of the worst pictures I bought stuff based off of in a while it was definitely definitely a gamble I don't I always tell people I don't believe in gambling it's not something I do but at the same time <laughs> I do I do gamble on stuff like this there were actually four trucks there there was a 54 cab and front clip but there was no bed on it and then also there was a, another pickup but the uh, pickup all he had was one picture from the back of it and a very poor picture from the front of it but there was weeds up to the windshield on all of these and so you really couldn't see what condition they're in and the 54 cab on one side looks like they grabbed it with a bale spear and just ripped the whole top of the cab out the doors are gone the other one the whole grill is completely smashed where a tree fell on top of it and they shot it clear full of bullet holes all down both sides so uh it, it, those are gonna get left behind. I'm not gonna go back for those. I do feel a little bit bad because I told the guy I made an offer for all four trucks and then I ended up only buying two of them. At least I bought something. I didn't send my guy down there and say, never mind, I don't want nothing. I wasn't gonna pay a guy to go 300 miles, or no, 200 miles, however far it was, I don't remember now, and then not haul something back. 
I don't do that very often. 99.9% .9 of the time, if I say I want something, I'll buy it no matter what, even if it's not quite as good as I thought it was. But those other two trucks were so junk that there I would lose so much money on those things that it just wasn't feasible. The trucks are cheap, but they're just so far away that shipping's expensive. Even these trucks aren't quite what I thought they were, but I'll still be okay on these. He had these trucks listed. He wanted 750 for this one, 500 for that one, and then he wanted 300 a piece for the other two. And I was gonna give him 1500 for all four. I ended up giving him 1000 for just these two. So I guess the other two, he can sell those to somebody else, maybe somebody a little bit more local. If they were close, I would definitely buy them. I wouldn't hesitate, even if they were closer. But that far away, I just just can't do it. But this, this, old, whew, this old GMC really isn't that bad though. I mean, it's rough. It's definitely rough, but look, the floors are still in it. It does have some rust up there in the kick panels, but compared to that 54 I bought the other day, that's completely falling apart. That's the difference between going west, is you get a truck like this, or if you go east, you get a truck like that 54 I had. This truck here, it's got one of those funky little fender spear things on it. I wish it had both of those. Those are kind of cool. Never really seen anything like that. Got good color to it, good patina. This would make a really cool rat rod, which I'm sure that's what'll happen to it. Uh, there's no rear end. I didn't realize there was no rear end on it. This truck here in the pictures, there was only two pictures of this truck and it was covered in weeds. I couldn't see all of this stuff. I mean, this thing's pretty rough. Honestly, this is probably just gonna be a parts truck. But once again, the floors are really solid in this thing. Kick panels are pretty solid. It's got a good dash. It's not rusted out above the windshield. A lot of good stuff on this truck, really. And the doors, doors are workable. They're not rusted out. They're kind of beat up a little bit. They've got a few extra holes drilled in them. Does this have a radio in it? I just noticed it has the antenna. No, the radio is gone. Huh. Is that a, a faux hood scoop? Huh. That's kind of interesting. That might be something. But yeah, they're both three quarter tons. I thought this one was a pickup. It was listed as a pickup, and so I thought it was, but oh well, that's okay. This in here, I knew it was a three quarter ton. I could see the one of the front wheels in the pictures. I gotta be out here bright and early, that way I can hook up to the new trailer so I can hit the road, get out there, and rescue those antique cars from the crusher. So, today isn't going exactly like I had hoped it would go. I thought we were gonna hit it bright and early, get busy hauling those cars, but uh, unfortunately, it's just as muddy there as it is here, and he's still crushing cars, and he just doesn't wanna mess with them this week. So we're gonna push saving those antique cars off to another day. Now I have to deal with a situation that I did not want to deal with, I do not want to deal with, and it's my fault, but such is life. As you guys saw in the first part of this video, I got a new trailer, pretty cool trailer. I've never pulled a gooseneck before and uh, wasn't even thinking. And uh, <laughs> I went to unhook, shut my tailgate, went to drive off and uh, crunch. I don't think it's supposed to look like that. <laughs> I got it good. Just completely tacoed it right in the middle and i bent my little deals on here too they're all bent out now oh man i can't believe i did that such a dumb move i don't make mistakes often but when i do make mistakes they're big ones i have no clue how or why i did that i even told myself multiple times make sure you leave your tailgate down this isn't like your other tra trailer you can't just drive off got to leave the tailgate down and i did leave it down but then when i got in the truck to go I was like, why is my tailgate down? And I get out and do boo doop boo doop and shut the tailgate and, do, and smash. <laughs> so I only hit that. I was probably doing maybe three miles an hour, two miles an hour. I wasn't moving very fast, but they're just real flimsy. And then I couldn't get it off. It wouldn't open anymore because those don't have a latch. You just push a button and they unlatch themselves. And I had to get out from under the trailer. So I had to get in the back of my truck and kick it until it popped off. And then getting that tailgate off of the truck is a nightmare. I didn't realize it. it's not like the older trucks where it just slides off, you know. You have to do some serious work, especially when it's bent. But I got it off of there. I'm going to run to the body shop now. I filed an insurance claim. It's going to cost me 500 bucks out of pocket, which is a bummer, but it's it's workable. I have an emergency fund for just situations just like this. So I'll be okay there. It's just the fact of the, the time factor now. Of Now I've got to go to the body shop, get the estimate done, and then they're going to order all the parts in, and then I'm going to have to go drop the truck off someday in the future, and it's going to be gone for a while. And... Oh, I just can't believe I did that. Today just hasn't been the greatest day, but you know what? It's okay. We're going to make the best of it. I'm not going to wallow in it. We're just going to take care of business and do what we got to do. Let's get to the body shop. Oh, before we go, there is one good piece of news is I smashed this bumper. Man, a year ago, at least I backed into an old truck bumper. It was super windy and sandy outside and I couldn't see where I was going. And I backed right in there, crushed this bumper. And I just never could justify putting the truck in the shop to get that fixed. But uh, I went ahead and included that on the insurance claim so I can just get it all done at once. 
So I guess there is a silver lining, if a guy can say that. And I am finally working on pulling the carburetor off of this Ford. <laughs> it's been a crazy busy day. I didn't expect Terry to be here today, but he called and said that he was elsewhere in Kansas and looking at a vehicle that was for sale and he ended up not wanting that truck. It was not what the guy had said it was. And so he wanted to swing by and check out those two trucks I just bought. He ended up buying both of those. So that was a pretty easy sale. Unload them one day and load them back up the next. Didn't make a ton of money on them, but you know, it was a super easy quick flip. And then in addition to all of that, I have been on the phone pretty much all, well not all day, but a lot today selling other vehicles. I sold a 40 or 41 Chevy that's out back. I sold a 54 Dodge truck. Uh, I forget what else I sold, but I sold quite a few vehicles today. I, nobody paid in full, obviously. Everybody just sent me deposits, but that's a pretty good deal. Yesterday I went around and I took, well not yesterday, the day before yesterday I went around and I took, I don't know how many pictures for people and sent people pictures and only one guy actually bought anything. He sent me $100 for a door off of a truck. So I wasted all that time sending all those pictures and I was a little bit frustrated, but then today, other people that had nothing to do with those pictures ended up buying stuff. So I guess it worked out. It's kind of a shame on this 272. I had another guy look at it today. You know how I had said somebody might buy it if I don't go ahead and junk it today? <laughs> I thought that was about to happen, but he looked at it and said, nah, it's just a 272. I don't want to mess with it. So that's okay. Away she goes. You can't save them all, and they can't all be saved. I think that's everything. And off it comes. Yeah, it's gotten a little bit of water down inside it from sitting out now for the last month or so. It still turns over. It could definitely be saved, but I ain't going to mess with it. They never did pick up that dumpster, though. So that tractor's still sitting out there, and I'm not going to be able to scrap this right away either. So uh, maybe between now and whenever it gets scrapped, somebody will want to buy it. We'll see how it goes. I'll throw that up there. It's supposed to rain all night and then snow all day tomorrow. So just in case somebody decides they want to buy it before I scrap it. And now I am headed home. I want to include loading that tractor in the dumpster in this video. So I was going to close it out today, but I guess we're going to have to wait till next week. So I guess I'll see you guys here in just a couple seconds.
I tell you what, that was an absolute nightmare. It wouldn't have been nearly as bad if it wasn't for this extremely, extremely muddy ground. This stuff is a nightmare to do anything in. These ruts over here, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but they're almost up to my knee. It's just crazy how muddy it is out here, but that's what happens when you get tons of snow and then it rains every other day ever since you had the snow. <laughs> I should have came out here early, early this morning before the sun came up. I didn't even think of it. It was about 28 degrees this morning and this ground would have been mostly frozen. Then on top of that, that tractor is the exact same width as the dumpster. And so getting it to fit in there was a nightmare. And I could have got it pretty easy other than the uh, trailer hitch on the, the three-point hitch or whatever you want to call it on the back of that tractor kept snagging everything and making it flip in awkward directions and I finally got it to flip over. That was the only way I could get it in there. I wanted to slide it in on its tires, but that just wasn't going to happen. I finally got it to flip over and then it flipped at a weird angle and then the front axle fell off. And, oh man, I tell you what, that was, <laughs> that was quite the experience. I did not enjoy that. That was one of the hardest things I've done in a long time. I couldn't pick the tractor up over the side of the dumpster. It was too heavy. If I picked it up that high to go over the side of the dumpster, my back end would come off the ground and I just couldn't do it. All the time people are saying, well, you should do this or you should get this type of crusher or you should do this or that or this or that. Then you can get more weight in your bundles of crushed cars that you do. Then you can get more weight in the trailers and the dumpsters. And I don't want more weight in there because this is what happens when you have too much weight is you have to deal with nightmares like this. We used to pack our bundles full of iron and whatever else we could find. And boy, we would make some heavy bundles. We've had bundles that we had to have two loaders to load on the flatbed before. And back in those days, we thought, yeah, we're going to make them heavy. But uh, no, actually, you don't want to make them heavy because that just makes everything in life no fun anymore. I'd rather put four easily manageable bundles rather than three insanely heavy bundles in there. And either way, you get the same amount of weight. And if you put too much weight, then you just got to unload it and they can't haul it. But we got it. I got some more room in that dumpster. I'm going to throw that frame. Nobody ever did buy that 272. So it's a goner. I'm going to throw it in there. And then there's supposed to be a guy here in a minute with an old car. And so I guess we'll see what that is when he gets here. There's just not enough buyers for every old car or old truck out there. It's the unfortunate nature of the beast. Doing this one hand is a little bit of a challenge. But we got it. There we go. I just got that car unloaded. It's a pretty cool car. I'll show it to you in a second. But first, I've got to take my tailgate out and drop it back off at the body shop. I was actually kind of shocked. The uh, estimate was only for $4,000, which is a lot of money. I'm, I mean, I still had to file an insurance claim on it, but I was really expecting it to be more like seven or $8,000. So the uh, price of parts has actually been coming down, it looks like. And here is the car that I bought. This is an early 50s Cranbrook two-door sedan. Just a little bit of rust down there in one spot. But uh, unfortunately, the car is just really beat up. The roof's caved in. All the glass is knocked out of it. It's always the rust-free ones that are all beat up. And the real straight ones are always rusted out. I guess it's got a little bit of rust back here as well. Got a lot of neat things about it. It just, unfortunately, these aren't a very popular car. They're not a highly sought-after car or anything like that. But it's got a good-looking nose on it. I just got to put a couple of headlights in it. It's all beat up. Every piece of chrome on this car is beat up. So uh, not really any good for anybody to use on anything. So this is really a good one to cut up for art. Then back here, I can cut the trunk off of it as well. It's not a super cool trunk. It's going to need some taillights in it, but I mean, it'll sell. No, it looks like no overdrive. One thing I just noticed that's kind of interesting is the uh, radio is all the way over here. Somebody, I mean, it looks like it's made to be there, but yet it looks like there's a, a radio delete right there. It almost looks like there's two radio deletes, so I don't know what's going on here. This is kind of confusing. And the glove box is in the middle, but yet that radio seems like it fits in the dash pretty good right there. So I don't know what's going on with all this setup. It's kind of a weird deal. I guess I'll have to look at some pictures and see how it's supposed to be. Not that it really matters. And one thing I thought was kind of cool about this car being a two-door is it's got the seat that folds forward over here on this side. So uh, that front seat might be worth something to somebody because that'll be the same seat as what's in a hard top. For now though, I'm just gonna set it back in the trees and we will worry about it another day. But with that, I've got some other stuff to do, so I am gonna head out. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This has been kind of a chaotic video. It did not go the direction I thought it was gonna go and a bunch of stuff changed in my tailgate situation, that tractor situation, but we really did get quite a bit done. I just talked to the guy that I was supposed to go get all those old cars and he's busy with another cleanup job now. And so he wants to wait on those. Maybe it'll be this week, next week, maybe, I don't know. I guess we'll just see what happens. Whenever that does happen, I'll be sure to post that. But with that, I'll let you all go. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there, find yourself an adventure. We'll see you on the next one.